It is a dilemma many families face, paying a utility bill just before service is scheduled to be cut. When Stallings family did that, yet their sewage provider still shut them off. While the company blames internal miscommunication, the family says it'll cost them $1,000 to get service back. Yeah, as a mom, it's, it's killing me. And I think the only reason I haven't lost it is because I know I have to be strong for them. About a week ago, the Price family got this notice on their door from Aqua, North Carolina. And Pay your overdue also, sewage bill within seven days or else service will be cut. I'm one person providing for my family of four. We are paycheck to paycheck. Patricia got paid on Saturday and her husband Dale called a service provider on Sunday making full payment. But on Monday, we look out my window, we see guys just playing digging in our yard. Even with a confirmation number in hand, Aqua contractors closed off the sewage line. These photos, taken by the Price's son, show several workers digging out front. The family pleaded with them to stop, even asking them to talk with the company. They refused to listen to me, were very rude. They um, did a lot of you know, saying a lot of bad things to us. The family called the State Utility Commission to file a complaint. While we were there, the investigator told Mr. Price the company admitted to a system error, but it still proceeded with a disconnect order. The Utilities Commission is not going to do anything and to look after us. Without sewer service, the Price family is unable to wash dishes or go to the bathroom, so they're having to rely on their neighbors for help. My biggest thing is the health risk of my family right now. I mean, my husband is sick, his immune system's already down. You see, Dale Price is battling muscle cancer and can't work. It will cost them $1,000 they don't have to get back their sewage service. Even though we followed all the information provided to us to the letter. We reached out to Aqua North Carolina and the State Utilities Commission, but neither has returned our phone calls. The State Utilities Commission plans to launch an investigation into how a Stallings family had its sewer service cut. It's a follow-up to a story first on Fox last night at 10. Now, despite paying their overdue bill, the family still had its sewage service cut. Now, the commission wants to know why that happened and what justifies a $1,000 penalty to restore service. <laughs> I said there's clothes everywhere. Yay! <laughs> and the sink is empty. Thank you, thank you. Mwah. I love you. Despite battling muscle cancer, Dale Price did a ton of cleaning today. Since Monday, the family has been unable to use the bathroom or wash clothes and dishes for lack of sewage service. The Utilities Commission called the family to inform them that Aqua North Carolina was forced to reconnect the service at no charge. From the time they got out of the truck till the time they were done, 10 minutes tops. Normally, families are charged a $1,000 penalty to disconnect and restore service. My neighbor across the street did a year and a half ago. He paid 1000 Because they were behind in their bill. Under commission regulations, a company can only charge reasonable and proven costs. We were told by the commission that the actual cost should be $645. It was flat out pay it. Or no yeah, service back on. Even with a confirmation number in hand, the contractors who came out on Monday to disconnect the service ignored their proof. By law, service can't be discontinued if there's a dispute between the customer and utility. I've always wondered, don't they do periodic audits on things like this? That's what the commission to me is supposed to do. But the prices are glad to hear the commission plans to launch two investigations based on what happened to them. Why was their service cut even though they paid? And how can Aqua charge anywhere from $1,000 to $2,200, all based on an invoice given by contractors whose work takes a few minutes? And while those questions will be answered another day, today, the prices have one less worry. So what, we have clean clothes to wear tomorrow. I was wondering how I was going to go to work. <laughs> Aqua North Carolina says it gives families a 10-day and then a 7-day notice before cutting service. The prices notice went out on the 11th, so service should not have been cut until the 28th. So residents in Mint Hill say their water tastes funny and leaves stains. Their provider, Aqua North Carolina, is the same company local customers file complaints with the state about overbilling issues. Now, Aqua says its water meets federal standards. Tonight, the results of independent water quality testing. Well, we've been frustrated with our water the whole time we've been here for seven years. Denise Boston and her husband, Mike, love their Mint Hill home. 
But the neighborhood water is a different issue. Remember, we have two cookouts a year in our neighborhood, and it always comes up. Denise says their drinking water tastes bitter. And because of corrosive buildup inside their coffee pot, they have to buy one every two years. That's after washing and rinsing like this morning. There are stains in the kitchen sink, all over the shower door, and a ring around their toilet. And Denise says they don't even bother washing the cars because it looks worse afterwards. It's doing that to my coffee pot and what my sink looks like. Yes, we do wonder what we look like. The water comes from Aqua, North Carolina. They've had an Aqua rep come out and test the water. The Boston say they were told the sample was within normal limits without explanation or a report. How are you? Great. Come on in. So Fox Charlotte hired Prism Laboratories to analyze their water. pH is a field parameter. Dale Mays is a field service manager. Right. It's not the first time he's tested Aqua's water. Occasionally the homeowner will say, you know, I'm, I'm getting kind of a metallic taste or it's got a you know, weird smell to it. And there's the fumes I had told you about. The samples collected were tested for contaminants that may cause bad taste or discolorization. Everything that we sample for today is not life-threatening. Uh, that's why they're not regulated. Well, it's 10 days later, so let's find out what the results are of our test. At Prism Labs, they tested for water color, pH levels, chloride, fluoride, and several metals. They compare the standards established by the EPA to the Boston's water. Okay, Mike, well, we've got the results of uh, your water. It fell mostly within acceptable limits, except two standards, as we explain the results to the family. It's the visible tint. Color, which had a low count, and pH levels, which tested just above the EPA limits at the Boston's house, but fell below the acceptable range at the lab. According to the EPA's website, a low pH gives a bitter metallic taste and also leads to corrosion. The EPA has a great explanation of pH. For Mike and Denise, the report clarifies some lingering questions. And while somewhat frustrated over purchasing water and still having to install a filter. I'm glad to know that it's safe for everybody here and that there's no, nothing really harmful in the water. Aqua also reviewed the lab results. A spokesperson says they'd be happy to discuss them with the Bostons. Fixing up the city for the DNC, but who pays for it? Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Morgan Fogarty. And I'm Israel Baldera. Some call Wilkinson Boulevard the gateway to the city because it will be quite visible to 35,000 DNC attendees. The area is being revitalized, but it's not always by choice. Businesses do try to keep the place clean, you know, by being the entrance you know, to the city. Abel's Auto and Truck Service has been on Wilkinson Boulevard since 2000. In the past year, Grant Abel painted the shop, put up new fencing, and every two weeks cuts the grass. While he wants to look good for the DNC... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try to be prepared. Grant hopes being proactive minimizes business inspections. Keep the city off of everybody's back. <laughs> <laughs> They're telling us that they want us to spend the money to get the place right for President Obama. From upgraded bus stop shelters to recently landscaped medians, Charlotte is doing its part to beautify Wilkinson for the convention. But business owners like Sam Evans say they too have been approached by inspectors. At Ford and Daughter used tires, it was painting the place. And I'm gonna do the best I can to make my place look even better. But when you don't have any money, you got to do what you can do. This whole black area had the, a, a big mural. At Dirty Which, South Customs, one I side of the building had this huge mural painted six years ago. Oh. Owner Hisham Bedwin says the city later. recently yeah. told him had it had to go. Years. So I really think that, you know, probably with the convention and some other things correlated, to, uh, you know, the, they made me cover it up. Businesses along Wilkinson Boulevard will be one of the most visible areas for DNC attendees come this fall. but. It's all mixed. While you have new stores and restaurants, you also have adult video, adult entertainment, and a lot full of school buses. You know, I've done Michael Jordan's car. You know, I mean, he's, we've done some work for him. We've done a lot of the Panther players, John Beeson. And to make repairs on the building's facade, Hisham has tapped into city grants. In the end, he thinks money spent to fix businesses, either by choice or force, will help long after the DNC. Especially this side of town, that if we enhance the area, people feel better about themselves. We called the DNC host committee to see if they've asked for any improvements to the Wilkinson corridor. We're told beautification project requests come directly from the city, not convention organizers.
gang prevention or student discrimination. Gaston County Schools accused of targeting Hispanic kids. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Morgan Fogarty. And I'm Israel Balderas. The district doesn't tolerate gang activity, so it asks certain students to sign contracts. Parents say that takes away their children's civil rights. She had a um, gang contract there, and then she told me to sign it. And like my mom wasn't there. The story of 11 year old Edgar Valentin is similar to that of these two other families. Hispanic kids saying they were intimidated by Gaston County school officials to sign contracts promising not to join a gang. If they don't sign, often the families are threatened. Deport my mom back to Mexico. They ain't not going to sign no gang contract. They're just like, yes, so we're going to deport your mom and dad. Edgar and Enrique say they were forced by Bessemer City Middle School administrators to sign contracts tracks without their parents present. Both Edgar's mom pues mal, porque, pues, yo sabía que no, no es and Enrique's father Ellos firmando. Ellos firmaron. don't understand how that can be done without their permission. Mr. Avila didn't find out until after Bessemer Middle suspended his son for 10 days because he wore a rosary to school. I wear it because my mom bought it to me. She bought him one, my sister and me. In an email sent to Fox Charlotte, the Gaston County School Superintendent says a gang contract is used as an intervention tool to provide help for a student who might not understand the consequences of joining a gang. But Alexandra Ventura says the contracts are more like weapons used to discriminate. Specifically, she says Bessemer City High School principal James Montgomery targets Hispanics. Her oldest son, Brian, was expelled from school after signing a contract and then being told he was in a gang without presenting proof to her. The district says an interpreter is made available to parents if one is needed, but they didn't tell her the school's expulsion could be appealed. When Bessemer High demanded her second son, Henry, also sign a gang contract, she feared he too would be targeted. And despite the district saying contracts are in English and in Spanish, parents are told if they don't agree with the document, their kids can't return to class. The Department of Education has launched an investigation into Gaston County Schools. All three families and a representative fighting their cause are scheduled to meet with the superintendent on Friday.